Hello, everyone, and welcome. Telestacks is pleased to host our RESCOM 1 Marketplace IQ series, where we focus on partner relationships and what that can mean for you. Broadsauce is introducing Telestacks CPath solution to its service providers to enable compelling and unique offers to your customers through the RESCOM 1 Marketplace. Selling CPLAS applications and services alongside your Broadsoft business service promises to drive significantly higher revenues for you and increase value to your existing customer base. To tell you what this means for you, I'm pleased to introduce David Rosenthal from Broadsoft and Kevin Nethercott from Telestax. David's focus at Broadsoft is helping drive unified communications adoption worldwide. And Kevin's leadership has forged successful strategic relationships with leading companies, including Broadsoft. Welcome, David. Welcome, Kevin, to today's webcast. Thanks very much. Um, uh, as an introduction, my name is David Rosenthal, and I'm a VC evangelist at Broadsoft, which means my job beyond the obvious creation of clever analogies and pretty slides is to help drive solutions in the service provider market that make Broadsoft business easier to sell. And when I say easier to sell, I mean it makes it easier to identify prospects, to shorten the sales process, um, and to, to help lower churn and to uh, create higher loyalty uh, amongst, our, uh, amongst our customers. Um, I'm going to today talk a little bit about Broadsoft Business, our suite of applications, and then talk about how we can integrate Telestacks into our service provider networks and create a compelling value proposition to end users who have unique, required, unique communication requirements. So a little bit about the Broadsoft Business portfolio. Uh, Broadsoft Business is a set or a portfolio of uh, complete, complete communication applications that include uh, three applications. UC1, which is a unified communications and cloud PBX set of features. Team1, which is a team collaboration and group messaging platform. And CC1, which is a contact center uh, cloud-based contact center application uh, delivering multi-site omni-channel contact center features to the, uh, through service providers to the enterprise market. Um, all of these applications are cloud-based, but they are service provider sold and service provider delivered. Um, and we think that Broadsoft Business uh, solves the entire cross-section of communication needs for uh, for all the different segments of, of the enterprise. Now, when we think about Broadsoft business and, and what makes it unique, we think that, that we lead the market in three specific areas. Um, first and foremost, we're mobile web, which means we build all of our applications mobile first. We have an entire portfolio of client apps that support um, all of the different varieties of iOS and um, and Android phones and tablets that are out there. Um, we design all of our user experiences to be mobile first. Um, we have deep integration based on our uh, ongoing relationships with both Apple and Google so that we can support functionality like Apple Call Kit, which gives unified communications app applications a very, uh, a very deep and user-friendly uh, interface for uh, uh, for over-the-top applications. Um, all of our applications are also highly secure. We support all the latest FIPS standards for encryption. We have a dedicated security uh, department at Broadsoft, including an officer-level security representative. Um, and we support all the latest uh, recommended processes for both data and rest and data in motion. And, and lastly, we build all of our applications with an eye towards openness. Um, all of our applications have an integrated developer program that Telestax is highly involved in to provide uh, integrated solutions um, along with our existing pre-built applications. 
Now, when we think about what Broadsoft Business delivers to the end user, right? We think about things in terms of unified communications, the contact center, team collaboration, and SIP trunking. These are the communication applications that are out of the box made available in Broadsoft Business and, and are delivered by service providers and sold by service providers to end users. Now, obviously, there are other, um, there are other things enterprise users need. Right, the Broadsoft doesn't do. Right, we don't build applicate, uh, office applications like Microsoft Office or Office 365 or G Suite. We don't do shared storage like Box and Dropbox. Um, we don't provide help desk like the Geek Squad, and we don't provide enterprise SaaS applications like um, uh, like like Salesforce.com. Now there there is sort of some space in between the pre-built communication apps that Broadsoft makes, specifically UC1, which is our flagship product, and certain communication requirements that um, businesses have. So these can be communication requirements that are uh, vertically specific, like for example, um, any business that has uh, a scheduling system quite often needs to communicate out to their customers for appointments. Now this could be a vet clinic, or this could be a restaurant, or this could be an auto mechanic store. You know, essentially any business that has a, a requirement to integrate into their, their existing scheduling system. Now applications like this tend to fall outside of the standard functions of UC1 or our other um, applications like Team One or Contact Center, and our relationship with Telstax is intended to be able to provide a marketplace full of applications that you, as a service provider, can um, easily access and deliver to your end users to provide a completely compelling and completely unique experience. So, before I hand the the, the call, the presentation back off to Kevin, I, I do want to say that our, our goal here is to be able to link in the Telestax uh, application suite and marketplace to allow our service providers to be able to identify um, problems within enterprise communication needs and be able to provide a solution that is unique and has a short sales cycle and has a high amount of customer loyalty because we think that that's important to our end users. Um, with that, I will hand the call back over to Kevin and he'll tell you a little bit more about Telestax, Restcom One, and the marketplace. Kevin, over to you. All right. Thank you, David. I appreciate you joining us today. And um, we're super excited about this relationship because we do share that same vision of helping service providers provide awesome products and services to the end user enterprise customer. Um, I think our, our objective is, as David kind of outlined this relationship, is to put each of the service providers that we work with in a position where they never have to say no again. As your enterprise customers and other customers come to you with ideas of how they want to engage and and use communications in their business and their business processes and so forth, we want to be able to say yes and uh, help you drive revenue through that process. What I thought I'd do is, is start by giving a little bit of background um, on Telestax. Um, I like to joke in the fact that uh, you can actually find us in about 80% of the Tier 1 carriers around the world, but many people haven't heard of us. and so. We're like, the, uh, we're like Intel without the budget to tell you that we're, that we're inside. But Telestax, the company, has been around for about six years, but our platform has been around for about 12. And that's part of the background and history of Telestax that really differentiates us. We started once upon a time as, a, as an open source project back with JBoss, was then acquired by Red Hat where they continued to grow the platform, grow the community, and then about six years ago, that team spun out of Red Hat and started Telestax. And based on this, this body of work, 
we've created um, just a, a great community of developers. We have, you know, we're approaching 5 million lines of code in, in the platform. We have over 30,000 commits into our community. And so we're seeing just great growth um, from the platform side as well as um, implementations around the world. Um, we're an 80-person team in about 20 countries, and you can find our software probably in 50, 60 countries. So um, again, we're, we've got a lot of experience working with service providers around the world. Um, just to give you an example of a, a few companies that we're working with, um, we have over 5,000 deployments of our software. And I think the key thing here to take away from these two slides is our close relationship of being an enabling technology within the service provider space. And in that role, we, we work very closely um, with these companies. And so we've learned a lot over the years. And so we learn um, what needs to be done from a technology standpoint, but we also hear about market needs and some of the pains and issues that they're dealing with. And I think we're creating, or there's a, we're at a new point in, in the communication space where we're hitting an inflection point where there's all sorts of new kinds of competition. And frankly, for our traditional service providers, whether you're a voice provider, an SMS aggregator, an MVNO, MNO, um, everyone out there wants a piece of you. We're seeing significant over-the-top types of applications coming in and taking business away from your network. Um, obviously, that started with consumer-based products years ago, but more recently, with the advent of CPaaS, we have a lot of platform companies now that are going directly to your enterprise customers and, frankly, taking away some of their most lucrative um, part of your business and, and running that over the top of your network. Um, we all were obviously experiencing the um, reduction of, of margin on traditional voice. And so there's a number of issues that we're all dealing with as service providers out there. What we're seeing happen is, if you look at this graph, it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, on the over-the-top types of applications, we're, there's no revenue generated, right? They're coming over the top and taking that business away. If we look at our traditional business, we're in the tenths of pennies for much of the voice and messaging types of services that might be taking place. On the flip side of that, though, we're seeing applications charging you know, 10 cents a message, 25 cents a minute, a dollar a minute. And so these are very high margin products that are communications based that as service providers, we should be able to provide to our end customers. And so that's our objective here at Telestax, is to help change the paradigm here and give service providers an opportunity to move forward and, and be able to do that. The way that we're doing that is through a new product um, that we have launched earlier this year called RESTCOM1 Marketplace. And so I'd like to walk you through RESTCOM1 Marketplace and show how we're doing this and how this can help impact your business in a very positive way. I like to talk about the marketplace in two ways. Um, the first is that um, each of you out there are doing something really well or you wouldn't continue to be in business. But what we're seeing more and more of is if I'm a voice network, I need messaging, I need video, I need APIs. If I'm an SMS aggregator guy, um, it's not good enough anymore. Customers are coming and saying, I need not only SMS APIs, but I also need to be able to do voice. I need one partner to work with. And so with RESTCOM 1, we have built out a platform that is a full CPaaS. So if you think about the other CPaaS players in the market, and you think of the features and the APIs and the capabilities that they have, what we're offering is something that in many ways is similar and yet better. And so the first thing that we're able to do is come in and CPaaS enable you. So we really don't talk about straight CPaaS. As Telestax, we're, again, we focus on enablement. And so if you 
have your Broadsoft network out there and you're doing great with that part of the business, there's those opportunities that David was sharing that are kind of in, in the gap where with a different API set or marketplace applications, you can now support those. And so the first way I like to think about this is helping you play defense. So that as customers come to you, you now have APIs, you have um, applications, you've got tools that you can now engage with your customer and provide the solution that they're looking for. Um, and we do this for voice, messaging, and video through WebRTC. Now, the second half of the RESTCOM 1 marketplace is the marketplace itself. So as you can imagine, as middleware deployed in you know, over 5,000 organizations around the world, we've had some pretty cool stuff built on us over the years. And so we started inviting them into a revenue share um, relationship within our marketplace. And so what that means is, is that um, if you've developed an application, you can come into our marketplace. We integrate you into our cloud um, version, which is our RESTCOM 1 platform. And then on the other side, we have the service provider already integrated into the RESTCOM 1 platform. And so we've taken all the complexity out of integration, business models, and so forth. That's all prepackaged. And then through a revenue share model, the service provider can now access any of the applications in the marketplace and resell those. And I'll, I'll share a list of those here in a moment. But the idea here isn't to be the next app store. What we're really focusing on are rich B2B applications. And so it's more about quality than quantity in what we're driving here. So with RESTCOM 1 Marketplace, we allow a service provider to do what they're doing really well today. We wrap around that through our CPaaS enablement, giving you the tools that you need. And then on top of that, we bring the marketplace that drives significant revenue. And so what this creates is a true kind of omni-channel experience. So on the left side of this, this slide, you can see that typically a lot of you are having to, to deal in silos. And so what we're able to do is take each of those and integrate that into the RESTCOM 1 platform. And then on the other side of that, connect you to all these great applications and revenue generating opportunities. So as you look at RESTCOM 1 Marketplace, we're able to deliver, as I've mentioned, voice, video, and text in a single platform. We're not building a CPaaS brand. We're enabling. So in essence, with um, RESTCOM 1, you can now private label that, white label it, create your own brand so that you can go out and support your customers with your own CPaaS offering. Um, we, again, support SMS and voice services, but it's in a bring your own carrier model. So anything that we do on our platform, we push back to your network. So rather than taking traffic away from you over the top, we're pushing it back to you so it, that becomes a billable minute or a billable message on, on your network. So we focus on what we do best and we expect you to focus on what you do best, and that between you know, ourselves and Broadsoft and your network and your operating team and our marketplace partners, we now have an ecosystem by which you can provide all of these um, opportunities. We approach this in a, in a flexible financial model with revenue sharing, and then to help support you, we have a whole team on our sales and um, business development and marketing side where we have account managers and can help coach you up on these different applications and use cases and um, help, you, help you get to market even faster in the process. So as we look at this, here's just a, a short list of some of the things that are in the marketplace. Um, we're obviously seeing a huge growth in the SMS market um, with contact centers uh, moving their traffic and implementing SMS as a way to support customers. We have a partner here, just a quick anecdotal story. They were working with a large brand that had a 9% closure rate on their inbound voice call center. By implementing an SMS um, solution, that increased to a 37% closure rate. So there's statistics all over the place on the, on the power of, of SMS and how that can be used in in your business. Um, we have a smart voicemail product. 
that uh, uses caller ID to um, customize greetings and do um, speech to text. We have an IoT partner that can allow you to become basically your own MVNO or even help your customer act like their own MVNO by providing detailed analytics and information about end users and devices. Um, we all know that chatbots are a huge growth area. All of our customers are asking for chatbots, and so we have an AI chatbot partner. We have um, other chatbot partners that, are, that bring their value as, as well. Um, we're looking for more and more vertical orientation applications. So we have you know, telemedicine partners. We have a really cool video web sharing type of partner. Um, we're connected into the cognitive voice platforms that are out there, and you can use those. And for those of you that might be out of the United States, we have um, USSD capabilities as well. That is a really fast growing um, business opportunity in places like Latin America, um, Africa, Southeast Asia. And so we're able to support you in those rural um, markets as well. This list will continue to grow, but this gives you a sense of some of the rich applications and partners that are already inside the marketplace. Now why is this important to you? So just quickly, if you look at the graphic here, on the left-hand side, that's kind of a traditional um, model by which we're doing business, right? So if we're a traditional service provider providing wholesale traffic, um, even retail to large enterprise, we're not making a lot of money on those minutes or messages. If you move into the CPaaS model, you're able to make you know, meaningfully more, but still you're at a platform layer. So the power of the marketplace is really this. In our model, um, we typically work in a 50, 30, 20 type of revenue share. So we share 50% of the revenue with the application provider that's bringing the business opportunity to us, 30% with the service provider, and then Telestax um, uh, with the remaining 20%. And so if you take that contact center um, solution that I shared with you a moment ago, um, they're charging anywhere from six to 10 cents per message. Um, if we did that through normal transport, you know, it's tens of pennies. And so the, the opportunity here is that with our marketplace partners, one, there's no development cost on your end. There's no upfront um, buying the application. The integration is already done through our RefCom 1 um, integration. But the most impactful thing is that you're now able to participate at the value level of the application not the transport. And so this makes a huge significant impact on the margin that you can make on the traffic flowing through your network. It all starts with the CPaaS capabilities. So this is the core capabilities of our platform. We know that it's driving business process applications and workflows. We're seeing growth, um, record growth, frankly, in the market for CPaaS players. The enterprises have now been educated they're looking for APIs and ways to integrate into your network. Out of the box, we're able to support you know, advanced call control, IVR, call queues, text-to-speech, um, with messaging, you know, A to P types of things, um, alerts, reminders. And then with WebRTC, we also have the ability to support video right out of the, the box with our platform. So as soon as we set you up, which is usually a four to six week process, you're able to have access to all of these capabilities um, immediately. Based on that, you can then drive these types of use cases. Um, and so you, know, you can kind of read through these. I don't need to go through them. These are common um, applications and use cases that uh, most of your customers are using in, in one way or another. But the key is, is that you're in a position now to be the innovator and help transform business communications for your customers. And so as you open the box on, on what we provide, we have all the popular APIs that you need for voice, video, messaging, and USSD. So you have a true omni-channel experience that you can control your underlying network through our APIs in each of those, those areas. Um, 
this allows you to differentiate yourself um, and how you deploy and what services you deploy. And we, in working together, allow you then to be your own CPaaS and have those capabilities. Now, when I say CPaaS, the expectation isn't that you're going to go create some developer community, though you absolutely could. The more critical piece of this is having the toolkit and thinking of your installed enterprise customers as your developers. As they come to you with ideas and things that they want to work with, you now have that toolkit to do it. One of the best tools that we offer you is our visual design tool. So we have APIs, so you can interface with us programmatically, or you can use our visual design tool that is a drag and drop tool to create applications. So in this graphic, you can see the APIs plus the apps here. These are verbs that you can just drag and drop to create sophisticated IVR. Um, you can send out reminders, alerts on the SMS side. Um, you can record calls. There's lots of things that you can do in a simple drag and drop perspective that really is very powerful for both you and your customers to put that tool in their hands. I think one of the other things that's really important is that WebRTC is, in my opinion, finally real. Obviously, we've been talking about it for years, but now with Safari coming on board and so forth, we now have you know, a much more ubiquitous user base that can access WebRTC. And so that's a core part of our RESTCOM 1 platform. We also provide SDK, you know, nearly full use clients for iOS and, and Android. So this opens up a lot of possibilities in how you can leverage the communications in your different use cases. So what we've described is what comes you know, with the relationship with Telestax as part of our RESTCOM 1 marketplace. What we've been able to do with Broadsoft is um, complete you know, formal integration. And so I think this is pretty straightforward, but we just wanted to call it out and, and help you recognize what, um, you know, how the flow would work. So if you think about an inbound call coming into your network, Broadsoft is typically you know, your core switch in, in how you're implementing your services. And so as it comes into, from the PSCN into Broadsoft, into Broadworks, we then can step in and then manage the call flow as that connects into one of our um, applications. So it's very straightforward in the way that we can um, integrate this. Um, you know, it took us a day or so to work this out between us as we went through this process. Um, the outbound call flow is very similar. So if it were to initiate with one of our applications, we stay in control of that, but we're able to route that through Broadsoft as, as you would expect. And so it makes it very straightforward in how we can engage. Um, I think a key point here, too, is that one of the unique things about Telestax and RESTCOM 1 is that we have our hosted offering, RESTCOM 1 Marketplace, but traditionally we've come from a history of on-premise in, in core networks of you know, Tier 1 carriers around the world. And so if your environment you prefer to run um, Telestax locally, we can support that. Um, we typically get started on the cloud because that's much quicker. And uh, you know, we move forward that way. Um, and then there's times where maybe you have a high security situation and you need to run something on-prem and some in the cloud. We've done hybrid offerings as well. So we offer you a lot of flexibility in, in the process. And so the way that we, we engage is through our RESTCOM 1 Marketplace Partner Program. And so typically what we do is our business model is really a pay-as-you-grow kind of model. And so we ask that uh, you participate on an annual basis um, with, a, 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 with an amount up front. But as part of that, what we bring to the table is everything that we've described here about the product. So you have full CPaaS enablement. We have our own DevOps team that uh, is responsible for our, you know, um, uptime and, and support there. Um, we obviously cover all of the hosting, managing, training, all the things that you would expect around the product. 
As a partner, you get special volume discounts. You're immediately put into a premium SLA situation. You get access to the marketplace. So part of being a partner is access to the different applications that, uh, that we've been talking about. And then we've developed a, um, an actual partner portal, um, a full website, where you can come and access key information, so white papers, use cases, um, all of the information about our marketplace um, partners. You're even allowed to reskin this and help manage your channel and use this tool to support um, the sales efforts. And as part of that sales effort, we have a dedicated account manager that would work with you um, both on a technical perspective as customer success as well as a business development account management perspective where we work with your sales and marketing to help coach you up on use cases, um, repurposing some of our materials to make it easier for you to, to go to market. And so um, at, at the end of the day, the goal here is to work really as partners to help support each other doing, you know, using and taking what, what you do really well, um, layering on this capability, and then giving you access um, to the marketplace to give you access to these, these really cool revenue generating applications. Um, so for, for now, that's um, you know, what we'd like to, to present today. Um, again, we're super excited about working with, with Broadsoft and hopefully adding some value to uh, what's already been deployed. And as David had mentioned, making it faster, easier for you to support your install base and then hopefully grow it together as we move forward. So um, if there's any um, follow-up questions um, or interest that we can follow up, my email is here on this slide and uh, look forward to, to hearing from you. So with that, uh, Maria, I'll uh, hand it back to you for, uh, for some questions. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Kevin. Uh, thank you, David. Um, at this point, we'd like to open, uh, like Kevin said, we'd like to open for any questions. I do have a couple um, right now uh, that uh, just came through that I'd like to ask the both of you. Um, let me see. So the first question would be, what are common Telestacks marketplace apps that service providers deliver alongside UC to quicken sales processes? Uh, Kevin, that's for you. Okay. Yeah, I can take that. So um, I think what's um, really unique about this relationship and how it works is that the core communications infrastructure and user experience is provided by Broadsoft. And so now what we can do is extend that so maybe it's a, a CRM implementation. So within salesforce.com, you want to add click the call, you want to record that, you want to um, put that into, um, you know, into the database. Um, maybe within your business and contact center, you need a, you're interested in a chat bot. And so being able to put a chat bot in the communications line, providing value there, and then having that pre-integrated so it just works you know, within the Broadsoft infrastructure is another one that uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of interest in as, as well. So those would probably be you know, a couple of examples, but I think the key is think about the business process where something needs to happen and touch a human. And so whether that's an SMS message or a voice call or a conference call, those types of things are things that we can initiate with our APIs um, to, to do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, second question, uh, how am I able to increase my revenue through the RESCOM1 marketplace? So I think this one could be pretty straightforward. Um, I think most um, providers that have implemented Broadsoft are charging a, a per seat or a per user type of, of, of pricing model. And so by adding some incremental features, you're able to then um, 
grow that that revenue stream around that. So um, it's it's a pure ARPU play. We're taking the base of what you have and then adding something through integration directly through our CPaaS platform or pulling in one of the, the applications from the marketplace. It just layers on top of what's already being sold. And so there's little investment in the front end of that, so most of that drops to your bottom line. So I think that's one of the more exciting things about the way that we've been able to structure this is how impactful it can be on the revenue and in the margins. Okay, sounds good. Another question that came in, uh, does this mean, uh, excuse me, does it mean Broadsoft has connection to all MNO globally? You want me to take that one, Kevin? Sure, David. <clears throat> So, so the question was, uh, does that mean Broadsoft has connectivity to all MNO globally? Um, I would imagine that's related to um, to SMS, um, and and the answer the answer there is that there's a sort of system of SMS intercarrier gateways that that's leveraged. So, I think the the short answer to that question is that you don't, mess, you don't need any external connectivity to MNOs um, that you as a service provider need to manage. Now there's a, a, a sub-answer there that I don't think was asked, but I'd like to clarify, which is how does a service provider use their existing network infrastructure in, in connection with, um, with both BroadWorks, BroadCloud, and RESTCOM and, and the answer to that question is that you can look at um, uh, RESTCOM 1 the same way you would look at, at a Broadsoft application, right? You've got a phone number attached to an application, and you've got a certain set of phone numbers that are assigned to Broadsoft applications, and there's a certain set of phone numbers that are assigned to um, RESTCOM applications, and those, those applications sort of do operate in parallel and then there's application-to-application -application integration between Broadsoft Business and RESTCOM 1. So I think I answered you know, both the question that was asked and uh, a follow-up question. Okay, great. So another question that came in was, uh, what is the process of CPAS enablement and how long does this take? Great, great question. So. The beauty of this is, you know, we've we've moved into the cloud era, right? And so RESTCOM 1 is operational and ready to go. And so typically the sales and marketing process takes longer than the technical interop process. So anywhere from four to six weeks um, typically is, is um, the time frame. Um, we do some basic interop between the networks. Um, we obviously share you know the CDRs and different things that the providers will need from a billing standpoint and we test that and so within four to six weeks we're typically able to get somebody up and, and running um, oftentimes as I mentioned the marketing side takes a little longer to figure out what they're going to call the product and, and move it out but um, that's the time frame it's it's amazing what uh, what the cloud has been able to provide for us you know, going from those old 12 to 18 month deployments of anything new to now we're, we're measuring it in weeks. So that's part of the exciting part of what we're doing here. Okay, great. Another question, how many simultaneous active clients can UC1 support? Uh, I'll take that one. Um, so the question was, how many simultaneous uh, active clients? And that, that really depends. You know, if we're talking about UC1 applications and, and Broadworks or Broad Cloud, um, that's really a function of, of scalability. Um, and it is, you know, essentially uh, virtually unlimited. I think that probably the best way to answer questions about UC1, uh, UC1 client uh, scalability is to sort of reach back through 
the broad soft service provider um, uh, SE team, some of whom were on the call to get that, that answer tracked down within the context of your particular deployment. Okay. Um, and then a follow-up question, I think. Is UC1's backend fully scalable horizontally? Got it. I, I think I uh, appreciate those questions about UC1 uh, architectures and uh, topology. Um, I, I would refer those back to whichever service provider account teams um, are covering your particular operator. Um, if there are questions uh, about how to connect back to those Broadsoft technical resources, please write me an email to drosenthal at broadsoft.com and I'll happily get, the, um, get you connected to the right people. Okay, great. Another question, what do we need to deploy RESTCOM chatbot? Got it. So um, the good news is that most of that work's been done. So we've pre-integrated our chatbot partners into RESTCOM 1. And so in essence, what happens is that we would work with you and your SMS provider, and then as, as part of that, we would then connect into our platform, and then we can tie you directly into the chatbot. So what we would do is introduce you to our chatbot partner where they could work with you on the specific logic that you might need for your use case. So whether that is just more of a menu-driven type of use case, like a restaurant that you can text and ask, you know, what are your hours, send me your menu, you know, those kinds of cool things, or whether the, it's more of an AI natural language capability where it's in the flow of, of kind of an inbound um, contact center. So it would depend on your use case a little bit, but most of the heavy lifting has already been done on our end, and so now it's more about the logic and how you want to use it on your end. Okay, thank you. I'd like to push out for any additional questions from our audience before we end today's session. Okay. Well, I do want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, for additional information on what you've heard today, um, or just to learn more about the Broadsoft and Telescax partnership, uh, please contact uh, Kevin at uh, kevin.nethercott at telestax.com. And more information about Telestax, please visit us at www.telestax.com. Thank you, David. Thank you, Kevin. And goodbye, everyone. Thank you.